What's up guys, TechPapi here and in today's video we are going to be looking at 10 great tips for Mac users. So I recently switched from my HP MV15 to the M1 MacBook Pro 13 or is it 13 Pro? M1 MacBook Pro 13 and it was kind of a big deal because this is my first time on the Mac OS but I'm not going to bore you with my new Mac experience yet. This video will be especially great for those who like me are new to the operating system and also for old timers who may not know about these little tips and tricks. The first thing we're going to be looking at is how to change your screen or keyboard backlight brightness or your volume settings in smaller levels. The default brightness and volume control on the MacBook moves either one bar higher or one bar lower but by hitting the shift and option key alongside the increase or decrease key on the keyboard you will notice it moves in smaller increments and this is perfect if you are trying to get that sweet spot on the volume control Number 2 on the list is the MacBook equivalent of Tax Manager which is Control, Alternate Delete on Windows. I really didn't know this existed until a couple of weeks ago and it has been a huge help to me since because I've been struggling I didn't get acquainted with having to close a program then go to the dog bar and close it again. But after discovering this it got really easier. All you have to do is hit Command, Option and Escape to open a, a little pop-up box where you see all your active applications and you can close them from there. This tip is for mainly Safari users, only Safari users. I don't know, maybe other browsers will incorporate it in the future, but for now it's just on Safari. If you are like me and you like to watch YouTube while you work or watch YouTube tutorials while you practice what you are learning, well, Safari has a little inbuilt feature called Picture in Picture Mode. What this does is put your video in a box that you can reposition or adjust the size by dragging. It's important to note that this doesn't work on every website and I've only tested it on YouTube so far. All you have to do is open up your Safari browser while playing a video on youtube right click twice and you see the little pop-up box there'll be an option there for picture in picture mode click it and you're good to go number four on the list is split screens uh, split screens is pretty common knowledge on the Mac operating system, it's rather easy to get but I think most people don't really take advantage of the function. To get this is relatively easy, all you have to do is make sure the app isn't open in full screen and if it is then just take it back to windows mode by clicking on the yellow button on the top left corner of the application bar then click down on the green one and you should see an option to tile left or tile right. Another thing you should note is that multiple windows have to be open for this to work. That means you need to have more than one application running at the time on your home screen for this to work. If you use an external monitor like me and you need to split into more than two parts of the screen, maybe you want four equal parts or tiles in the screen, then I'd recommend you download Magnet from the App Store. Now note, this app isn't free, it costs about $8, but trust me, it's worth it. I've been using Magnet for about three weeks now and I love everything about it. It's smooth, the transitioning is great, there's no lag, there's no delay moving from one tile to another. So yeah. If you can afford it, give it a go and trust me, you'll love it. There might be other free apps for split screen on the Mac OS out there, so don't forget to do your research and let me know if you find any in the comment section down below.
Number 5 on the list is one of my favorites and that's Spotlight Search. Spotlight Search is a great way to find files, folders or applications without the hassle of searching through Finder. All you have to do to access it is hit that command and space by key and the Spotlight Search bar will pop up on your screen. You can also use, you can also use it for currency conversion, unit conversion and lots of other cool stuff. Now next on the list is custom messages. Now most people may not know this but you can actually leave custom messages on your MacBook clock screen just like on your iOS device or Android device. In case you misplace it and someone kind enough to return it to you find it. Now to activate this, all you have to do is head over to system preferences, security and privacy, then click the box for show a message when the screen is locked and set your custom lock screen message. Number 7 on the list is Accessibility Zoom. This literally allows you to zoom in on your cursor wherever it is on your Mac screen. To activate this, all you have to do is go to System Preferences like the last time, Accessibility, Zoom and then you toggle Use Scroll Gesture with Modifier and that's it. Now all you have to do is hold down the Control key on your keyboard and scroll up to zoom in or scroll, up or scroll down to zoom out. You can also use keyboard shortcuts to zoom in and zoom out but I feel more comfortable using the scroll option. Number 8 is one of the most important tips I'm going to give you in this video and I'm talking about saving your signatures on the preview apps. I didn't know you could do this. I found out about it on the Reddit page. People don't know you can actually sign PDF documents from your MacBook via the preview app and this is really great if you have a document you have to send across urgently and you don't have any printers with sc or scanners nearby. All you have to do is open up preview open the document pdf document that you need signed click on tools then a note and then signature where you see the option to either sign with your trackpad or camera now you can try using the trackpad but we all know that it isn't going to come out looking very great so what you want to do is go over to camera sign clearly and boldly on a white piece of paper and hold it over your camera to scan after that you can easily drag the scan onto any pdf document that you want to and save it Next tip I'm going to drop is more for preference than an actual necessity because not everyone really likes it. I'm talking about tap to click. Now this simply means you can use your finger to tap on your trackpads without having to actually push down. So double tapping on your trackpad will select and open a folder. To activate this, all you have to do is go over to settings, open up trackpads, go to point and click and click on tap to click. But 10 on the list is the remote control feature and this is one of my favorites. Did you know that built into the operating system of your MacBook is the ability to control someone else's screen remotely as long as they are connected to the internet? Well, if you did, awesome. And if you don't, well, you can. All you have to do is open up Spotlight by hitting the command and spacebar key, type in screen sharing, Type in the Apple ID logged into the system you require access to and do receive a notification asking them if they want to grant you permission to view that screen and all they have to do is accept and just like that you can control that screen directly from your MacBook. Sadly I don't have a second system to test this on but it's super useful if you have to help someone who isn't there with you. Hey guys and girls that's it for this video if you learned a thing or two don't forget to leave a like. Thank you for watching as always, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell button. Until next time, peace.